songbook to page 271 and stand with us. 271, standing on the promises. fail. We're glad you're here, and we're going to have prayer together. Brother David stage is going to lead us, and uh, let's bow our head, close our eyes, and we'll reverence the house of God together, and our brother's going to pray with us. All right, Brother David. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. We can gather together in your house, Lord. Father, we thank you for the, your son, Lord, that died on the cross to forgive us of our sins, Lord. Father, I pray if there's one here that's lost today, Lord, doesn't know your Savior. They don't know you as their Abba Father, Lord. I pray that the day today will be the day. Yes, Lord, Father, yes. thank you for everything you're going to do. I pray that you bless this service today. I pray that you smile down upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. you. May be seated all over the building. We want to welcome our members. And also, we'd like to take this opportunity to welcome uh, any. Well, we do have visitors here, and we're glad that you're here. Thrilled that you're here at Mountain View Baptist Church. And make yourself at home, some in the balcony. Uh, others on the lower level, but you're always welcome here at any service, anything going on at Mountain View Baptist Church. We'll be back tonight at 6 p.m., so keep that in mind. And then Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we'd love to have you. And then uh, write all these things down. Well, don't have to write this down, but remember this. Tonight after church, all the young people from age 10 and up are invited over to the fellowship hall for food and fun and fellowship. Uh, we're Brother Nathan and Miss Ash Ashley who are a, uh, actually in Walterboro. He had to preach there this morning. They're coming back immediately after the morning service, driving straight back here. So they'll be there and be in our church service tonight. And the get together is still going on. So once again, 10 and up, uh, you're welcome to stay at the Fellowship Hall after the service tonight, all right? Keep the musical in mind for the school. That's April 19th. That'll be in the gymnasium at 7 p.m. April 19th is that day. And then keep the baptismal service in mind. That's April 21st on a Sunday night. And then tomorrow evening, supposed to be really nice weather, I believe, and there'll be a home baseball game and maybe minor concessions, drinks, some snacks, something like that possibly. But either way, it's always nice to get out there in the sunshine and support the uh, baseball team. So if you want to come, that starts at 5 o'clock tomorrow evening, all right? And then immediately after the service, we're going to let Brother Landon come up to, to, to the church here to the pulpit, talk about the revolutionary run that's coming up April 27th, all right? Let's uh, have the ushers come on in. Thank you, men. We'll, get, we'll receive the regular tithe and the regular offering. And I trust and pray that you are a, are a giver, a tither, and faithful giver unto the Lord. The choir is going to sing. Appreciate Brother Cam filling in, doing a marvelous job. And Brother Marty as well. So the Brother Cam's going to lead the choir. And yeah, go ahead and grab those devotional books, if you will, guys. Uh, 
Brother Jared. They've got the devotional books. I think that's for April or May. May that's, yeah, pro probably April. But let's get those out. And uh, you worship God and you're giving while the choir sings. All right, go right ahead, guys. if you will, way in the back, and I uh, want you to pray for us, and uh, please remember all the announcements in the bulletin, and a pretty long uh, prayer, prayer list in the bulletin as well, some not well, Brother Wagner's doing well, uh, probably going to get moved to CCU today, we praise the Lord, him coming through that hard operation, all right, Brother Madeline, pray for us and dedicate the offering. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, Lord, for this another great opportunity, Lord, to be in your house this morning. We thank you, Lord God, Lord, for the beautiful sunshine. We thank you, Lord God, Lord, for the sweet spirit we feel here this morning. We thank you, Lord God, Lord, for being able to be able to give back unto you, for Lord. And we pray, Lord God, Lord, you just take this offering that's been given today. We pray, Lord, you'll take it, bless it, multiply it, and use it the way you see fit. And Lord, I pray, Lord God, Lord, for our missionaries, Lord, out on the mission field. Lord, just be with them, for Lord, and help them. And be with our new missionary, for Lord, that's been added to Denmark. I pray, Lord God, choose you, Lord, in a mighty way and prepare another church there in that country. Help them, Lord God, to come to you and know you as Savior. We thank you in Lord Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. And Mountain View Baptist Church, let me tell you some good news. Uh, just any day now, maybe sometime this week, uh, you know, we've had, we, we had ordered a van a long, long time ago, the kind of van you can go into and not have to bend down and scratch down. You can walk right down the middle aisle. And uh, that's uh, on the way. It's in Alabama. They're shipping it to Spartanburg. So because of your faithful giving and your tithing and offering, we're able to do those kind of things. And we would really appreciate it. And I promise you, the men, especially the men, we will, and you, can, you ladies can use it too, but we'll go to all kinds of meetings with that vehicle. And they'll be in here soon. And we think we're looking forward to it. They're getting it in. All right? All right. Worship with the choir. Sing it out, choir. Sing it out, choir. Let's do it. There is a blood that cost a life that paid my
a great Thank God! The try to hide this precious Song group, page number 553. 553, and stand with us. 553, sweet by and by.
we have some sickness and we have some spring breakers, I guess, will be coming in today. I, I know we got some folks traveling back today, but we're just the King James boys, and then after the King James boys, we'll have the uh, we'll have the youth choir, and then we'll go right on with the service. All right, y'all ready? Well, it's amazing I never saw to today how foolish a son I had been. The grass is not greener here, and nobody cares. Oh, but I know where I've got a friend. He's still setting my place at the table. Still calling my name in prayer. He still looks up the road. Somehow he knows his prodigal son is coming home. My father's face and hear him say, Son, welcome home. Well, I was still a great way from my father's house when he came running to greet his lost son. I said, your servant, I'll be. Oh, but he never heard me. He said, my prodigal son has come home. He's still setting my place at the table. Still calling. My name in prayer He still looks up the road Somehow he knows His prodigal son Is coming home Coming home His prodigal is coming home. Amen. 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 Bible based song. Amen. It's what that is. Other visitors have came in. We're glad you're here. Worship the Lord together with us. This is our youth choir, and they're going to do one, and you worship with them, all right? Struggling through my life and the choices I have made Looking to the right and left, trying to find my way Coming to a crossroad where I caught a glimpse of Him Savior reaching out to me with hands that bore my sin. Well, no greater love was shown than on a cross at Calvary. I decided then and there the 
choice was clear to me. And I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. For he means more to me than the world you see. There's no question in my mind. I'll take Jesus every time. What if opportunity should rise up like the sun? Shine so bright on all the promises of what I could become. Roaring hands of compromise could offer wealth and fame. Tempting me to turn around, denying Jesus' name. Well, I'd rather be a poor man and have riches in the truth. So without a second thought, let me tell you what I do. Well, I take we only have to take him one time, amen. And guess what? He's there forever, amen. He's there forever, amen. Thank God. Take your Bible, please. Go ahead, Brother Dallas. Amen. That's right. That's right. Thank God. 
Thank God. Amen. 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 Great, great, great. We welcome, we welcome praise. Amen. We really do. I want you to pray for Brother Yank. He's down there at Thompson Chapel preaching in Calpion. I'd like to pray for Brother Chris White. Just took the church there in Gaffney, South Carolina, preaching. I want you to pray for Brother Cooper. He's in Santa Clara, California, preaching way out there. And then uh, Brother Nathan is down there in Walterboro, South Carolina. So all these folks would be here, but they're out preaching, evangelizing, and trying to help these other churches. Amen. Take your Bibles and go to Luke 24, please, everybody. Luke 24, and then you might want to find your place in Acts chapter number 1. Luke 24, and then Acts chapter number 1. We're going to get right into the message and do uh, what we can and give you the Word of God as the Lord has prepared our heart and laid it upon our heart, all right? If you were here uh, on March the 24th of this, uh, just last month, and most of you remember, I preached on lead me to, to, to Gethsemane, lead me to the Garden of Gethsemane. On the 24th that night, we came back and I preached on Gabbatha and then Golgotha, Calvary, all right? And then the 27th, that was a Wednesday night, we preached on Jesus' burial in Joseph's new tomb. That was good, amen. Then on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, we preached on the many infallible proofs of the resurrection. Then that night, Brother Cooper came back and preached about the entire life of Joseph, how it represents the life of Christ, and he said that that's enough for revival, amen. I agree with that, amen, I agree with that. So we, we went from Calvary, the garden, to Calvary, to the tomb, to the resurrection, and now I want to preach this morning on the ascension of Jesus Christ. I've never dealt with it. It's brand new, but I want you to really give me your ear, all right? The ascension of Jesus Christ. Look at Luke 24 and verse number 49, everybody. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Watch this. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them. Watch this now. And carried up into heaven. Y'all believe that? Yeah. This, that is a supernatural miracle. Carried, look at the wording. Carried up into heaven. Watch verse, verse 52. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Here's our responsibility. And we're continually in the temple praising and blessing God. And then the writer said, Brother Randy, amen. I like that. Don't you like that? That's what church is about. Worshiping God, blessing and honoring God. I'm not ashamed of it, amen. I'm not afraid of it. Matter of fact, I encourage it, amen. I encourage it. Most churches don't want it, but listen to me. We want it, amen. We want it. But I want you to look in verse number 51 again. He was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Take your Bible and go to Acts chapter number one. A couple books over. You know where I'm going. Acts chapter one. Going to give you all I can right here as quickly as we can. Acts chapter number one, please, if you will. Look in verse number nine. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, uh, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. I'm going to stop reading there. Look, if you will, in verse number uh, 10, while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up. He went up. Look at verse number 11. 
the same Jesus which is taking up from you into heaven. I want to preach with the help of the Lord this morning with your Bible open on a grand subject. I mean a grand subject, and that is the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here by way of introduction, I'd like to say to this church today that the nature of the resurrected body of the Lord Jesus Christ necessitated his ascension and his exaltation. Such a body as was his was not subject to ordinary laws and it could not permanently abide here on this earth. Christ's future ministry necessitated that he have a removal from this earth. Could I tell you the ascension and the ex consequent exaltation were necessary to complete the redemptive, the redemption work of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of atonement, listen to this, the blood of atonement, it needed presenting at the right hand of the Father and the presence of the Father how to secure our eternal redemption. Somebody wanted to say one time, I wonder what happened to all that blood. Well, I cannot take you to the actual verse and tell you, but I can take you to some other verses and tell you that that actual blood that was shed on Calvary was kept, was guarded, was secure, and ultimately, thank God, it was presented at the tabernacle on high, uh, thereby satisfying the righteous demands of the Father and saying to the Father, the price has been paid. Our redemption has taken place. And you know what that does? That secures our salvation and it secures our access. It were it not for him being the forerunner that none of the rest of us could follow behind. But thank God he presented that blood. Amen. And could I tell you that the ascension of Jesus Christ and his exaltation were necessary to complete redemption. And they were necessary for him to continue his ministry in heaven. And that is, Brother Randy, uh, taking his place at the right hand of the Father. Now, I want to tell you, church, this is bigger than I am. I mean, it's way bigger than I am. You have God the Father who rules and reigns over this world and this universe. And then you have God the Son. That's what I said, God the Son. He was God. But yet the Bible said, Brother Dallas, he took his place at the right hand hand of the Father. Somebody said, why in the world would he be doing that? Well, I want to tell you, friend, he did that for me, and he did that for you. And because he did that, Brother Derry, thank God he is now seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. And you know what that means? He is our advocate. He is our mediator. He is our great high priest. Thank God he is our intercessor. Thank God he is our go-between. Every day that we live, every year that we live, thank God, listen church, we have a representative in heaven and that representative is the Lord Jesus Christ and that would have never taken place were it not for his ascension. Amen. I want you to think about the ascension of Christ. And I've never preached on it. I don't know that you've ever heard anybody preach on it necessarily. But I tell you, Brother Brian, there are those who tell us that the natural laws of the universe rule out the possibility of a bodily ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what? When the natural laws say, Brother Madeline, that it can't be done, hey, you know what we do? We turn to a supernatural book, a supernatural book that's divinely inspired by God. And you know what I find in the infallible Word of God? I find out that his incarnation was supernatural. You know what I find out? I found out, Brother Dallas, his resurrection 
is supernatural. And you know what else I find out, Miss Tiffany? His ascension back to the Father. It was also supernatural. We do not blindly receive this. We do not blindly accept this. We accept this because, thank God, we have the full assurance of the teaching of the Word of God. If you wasn't here at the 10 o'clock hour, our brother spoke about our final authority. Our final authority. And can I tell you, our final authority is not the higher education. Our final authority is not politics. Our final authority is not anything that you've heard about in this world. Our final authority for all matters of faith and practice are found in the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of God. And ladies and gentlemen, that final authority tells us that Jesus did die, that Jesus was buried, that Jesus resurrected. But thank God, Brother Joe, it tells us also that he bodily ascended. Amen. He bodily ascended. And listen, you can forget about the natural laws. You can forget about the law of gravity. Amen. You can forget about all that. We're talking about God here. We're talking about God's Son. Brother Benny, we're talking about supernatural miracles. And listen, church, I believe every miracle in this Bible right here. I believe every one of them. I believe that Jonah was swallowed by a whale. I believe that the children of Israel crossed on dry ground through the Red Sea. I believe that he fed millions of people in the wilderness on manna that came down from God. I believe today that, listen, miracle after miracle after miracle was to took place in the Word of God. And so there's no reason to doubt. There's no reason to doubt the supernatural aspect of the incarnation, the supernatural aspect of the resurrection and Josh, the supernatural aspect of the ascension. Amen. Y'all believe it, right? You believe it. All right? So thank God for the, his ascension. And by the way, he had witnesses. Amen. He had witnesses, Brother Mark. He had witnesses, and they are just as reliable as the witnesses that witness his resurrection. And their testimony corroborates all the facts that the Lord himself indeed resurrected and he ascended. And by the way, I want to tell you this. Listen, listen, everything I'm saying, it's in this right here. He was seen by Stephen. Somebody help me. I said he was seen by Stephen. He was seen by Paul. I'm talking about after his ascension. Not, no, I'm talking, I'm talking about earth. I'm talking about Jason. After his ascension, he was seen by Stephen. He was seen by Paul. And guess what? He was seen by John on the Isle of Patmos. Hey, here's the song. Here's what they sung about. He lives, amen. Thank God he lives. I don't serve a dead Savior. I don't serve a buried Savior. I serve a living Savior, Brother Doug Pye. And that living Savior not only conquered the grave, but hey, hey, he supernaturally left this world. Now, I'm going to throw this at you, all right? If he had a supernatural coming into this world, then why wouldn't he have a supernatural departure? If Brother Brian, if the Bible teaches a unique, uh, a, a unique incarnation, uh, Miss Cooper, a unique coming into the world, why would anybody, Josh, have any doubt doubting the uniqueness and the miraculous and the supernaturalness of his departing? Amen. All right. Let's talk about the ascension just a minute. I want to talk about it supernaturally. Listen, there was no optical illusion. No optical illusion. There was no trickery. And let me just throw this out. There was no David Blaine, the magician. Somebody say amen. Somebody said, do you see that man levitate? No, I'm not seeing anybody ever levitate. But I tell you, I know one that did. I knew that gets your interest because you, now you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, listen, Josh, he was on the earth and then he just started leaving the earth. I said, I said, he was on the earth and then all of a sudden, Brother Perry, he started leaving the earth. 
He started leaving the earth. Maca Macaria, listen, no optical illusion, no subjective vision, no subjective vision. I used this word last week. No supposed apparition, no supposed apparition. A spirit, no, no, no. He didn't leave as a spirit. I said he didn't leave as a spirit. He left in a battle-scarred body. I said he left. I only got an amen out of some of you. He left in a battle-scarred body. Thank God. Thank God those battle scars are for me and those battle scars for you. Hey, friend, and when he comes back to Israel, you know what they're going to say? Where'd you get the wounds in your hand? Y'all know your Bible, don't you? Where'd you get the wounds in your hand? He's going to show them, Brother Randy, I paid for you Jews as well. Thank God for Calvary. Thank God he paid the price. Thank God he bought us. Thank God he paid the ransom. Thank God he shed his blood. Thank God he died. Thank God he poured out his life's blood. And by the way, all of that was supernatural. Now, because we're limited on time, on Sunday morning anyway, we try to respect people's time, I'm not going to ask you to turn to all the passages, but when you think about the supernatural aspect, the supernatural aspect of his ascension. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what we are going to do. We are going to look at some of this. Uh, I, he had a glorified body. That glorified body, Brother Ivester, rose from the ground. Jesse, that glorified body, I'm not going to use the word levitated again. Because it was more than that. Brother Douglas, that glorified body went all the way up. And by the way, by the way, hold on. He's not been back since. He's not been back since. But guess what? He's coming, friend. He's coming. Thank God, Brother Landon, he's coming. Take your Bible. Let's start in Mark chapter 16. Go to Mark chapter 16. We're talking about the ascension and the supernatural aspect of it. Look at Mark chapter 16, everybody. I want, I want you to see the, the wording of our King James Bible. Amen. The wording of our Bible, okay? I want you to see it. Mark 16, 19. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was, watch this, watch this, Derek. He was what? Received up into heaven and sat, y'all ought to be saying amen right there, and sat on the right hand of God. Look up here. Hey, hey, that's where he's at now. That's where he's at now. Hey, hey, that's what he's doing now. That's what he's doing for you. That's what he's doing for me. That's what he's doing for our church. That's what he's doing for every church. He's seated at the right hand of God Almighty, interceding on our behalf. Thank God as our great high priest. Amen. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. But away with Roman Catholicism. I said don't get mad, but away with Roman Catholicism. I'm not going to no earthly priest. Brother Andy, I'm not talking to no earthly priest. Hey, hey, I love you, and I'm not proud right here, but I don't need an earthly priest. Brother Perry, my, oh God, mine's up in heaven. The head of the church is up in heaven, and that's what he's doing up there. That's why he went up there. That's his continual ministry up there. It's to be our great high priest. Amen. Amen. But I'm, I'm interested, Brother Brian. I'm interested in verse 19. He was, he was received up into heaven. Received. As if to say, Brother Perry, and I, this is a little speculation, but as if to say, Jesse, there was a welcoming committee. Hallelujah. A well, he, oh man, he wasn't a stranger. I said he wasn't a stranger. They knew exactly who he was. I can only imagine on that cross. I can only imagine the blood and the nails in his hand and in his feet 
and the, and the crown of thorns and the spear in his side and the blood and his cat of nine tails. I could only imagine, Brother Randy, I could only imagine in the embattlements of heaven, the angels looking at the Father and saying, we can rescue him. We can intervene if you want to. Don't you know? And I'm sure the angels said, you know, he could call 10,000 angels to destroy that world and set him free. But it never happened. You know why? Because love kept him on the cross. Thank God love kept him on the cross. And I tell you, the Bible said, Miss Pat, and I love the wording of the Bible, he was received, received. Now I wonder, I wonder, Brother Iverson, I wonder truly, I do wonder, was there a welcoming committee that was welcoming him back? You say, well, if they're welcoming him to heaven, does that mean he started in heaven? Well, you figure it out, friend. He's always has been, and he always will be. He came down here for a temporary, temporary stay, and then he went back to the Father. Take your Bible, everybody, and go to Luke 24. We went there, but let's go there again. I'm going to hurry right now, okay? All right, now I'm going to hurry. You're going to have to stay with me. Go to Luke chapter 24, everybody. Luke 24. I want you to look in verse number 50. And he led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands and blessed them. Look at verse 51, the wording of our Bible. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them. Watch this. Now, this is interesting right here. He was parted from them. There's that, now again, not being, not being silly here. There's that levitating going on. There's that rising going on. Miss Donna, it's going on right then and there. He was parted from them. Watch the wording here. And carried up. Carried up into what? Not purgatory. Not the first. Hey, look up here. Not the first atmosphere where the birds are. No, no. He was carried up into heaven. Where's that at? That's the very presence of God. What, a, what wording? received up, but now, Brother Trey, carried up into heaven. I don't know if you're like me, but when you find words in our Bible, you want to dig deeper, you want to investigate and delve into Brother Todd. What in the world is all that talking about? Brother Bob Jackson, if he was received, that means there might have been a welcoming committee, but if he was carried... I'm just going to make you think, if anything, I'll make you think, Brother Stephen Law. If he was carried, then uh, you reckon there could have been, a, could have been a, 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 a battalion of angels that accompanied him? Oh, man, what a sight. What, hey, hey, what a miracle. What a supernatural touch of God carried up into heaven. And by the way, here's what you're supposed to be doing. And they worshiped him and they had great joy. And listen, we serve a risen savior. We serve an ascended savior. Why won't we worship him? And why wouldn't we praise him? And why wouldn't we continually be in the temple praising and blessing God? Amen. Take your Bible, everybody. Go to, go to, go to Acts chapter 1. See, we ran by it so quick, but now I want to emphasize it. I feel like the Lord wants me to. I really do, because I've never preached this. Acts chapter 1, hurry, Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Verse 9, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, they were sitting there watching him, he was taken up, watch this, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And I'm not trying to be silly. I am not going to be even borderline disrespectful. But if I'm reading that right, a cloud received him out of their sight. Did the cloud help elevate him? Did the cloud help hide him? The cloud obscure him, or did, or maybe this, did he disappear into the clouds? And he kept going, and he kept going, and he kept going, and he kept going, and he kept going. He said, well, what about all them temperatures? Hey, you forgot something. We're talking about a glorified body. 
We're talking about a glorified body that can walk right through that wall. I said he can walk right through that wall. Listen, when you take away the miraculous out of Christianity, you don't have no Christianity. When you tear down, and by the way, we're not going to be like the man in the Old Testament and take a pen knife and cut out what we don't want, amen? We're going to accept it all. We're going to accept every bit of it, every bit of it. And my Bible said, my Bible said in verse number nine that a cloud received him out of their sight. All right, you've watched a tent, I mean, a sky, you've watched a bird, you've watched an airplane, you've watched uh, many objects up, up in the, up in the, up in the uh, atmosphere, and after a while, the height gets so, so, so immense that it just goes out of your vision. Brother Ivester, they were watching. They were looking. All right, read verse 10. Look at verse 10, look at verse 10. And while they looked, I told you, they would look steadfastly toward heaven as he went up. Isn't that amazing? As he went up, the old two, two men, and we know these to be angels, here verse 11, they said, you men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taking up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Uh, could I tell you what that means? He went away with a cloud. He's coming back in the clouds. Same way. And I love a song I heard years and years ago. He's coming back and I'm the only reason. The church, the church is the only reason. All right, that's Acts. Uh, go to, uh, did I get verse 10? Yeah, we got verse 10. We got verse 10, the Bible talked about, let's see. Uh, yeah, as he went up, we got verse 10. Take your Bible and go to, Go to Ephesians chapter number four. Uh, see, you think maybe God has a lot to say about this? Oh, absolutely, friend. He's got a lot to say about this. Look at Ephesians four. This is some real scripture right here now. Better get your thinking cap on before you get there. Ephesians four, take your Bible. Ephesians four, please. Look at verse number eight. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. What's that mean? He brought the spirits out of prison. Let me stop a minute. Did you know that there was a place called paradise and it was in the heart of the earth and the Lord, this Bible teaches, went to paradise, brought those out of paradise. I believe in Isaiah right there. You stay with me, okay? Hell hath enlarged itself, probably enlarged itself, and God moved paradise out. Does that make sense? Moved paradise out. He led captivity captive. Verse 9, now, now that he ascended, what is it? But he also first, also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above. Why, wow, this is good. This, is, this goes a step further. He ascended where? Up far above all heavens. That he might feel all things. If he's far, listen, I love the Bible. Don't you love the Bible? If, he, if he's far above all heavens, listen, there's nowhere else to go except the presence of God. Except the presence of God. Amen. As we speak, as we preach, as we, you listen, as you attentively listen this morning, right now, going on in the presence of God the Father is a bodily Savior for the glorified, wounded body that, that's healed, healed, sitting down on a throne, co-equal with the Father, He's not sitting there watching, wondering what's going on. He knows what's going on. He's not sitting there worried about what's going on. He's got everything to under control. He's sitting there, and you know what he's doing? And this is what blows my mind. Miss Bonnie, this is what blows my mind. He can be your intercessor, and at the same time, he's my intercessor. He can be Brother Walford's intercessor, at the same time, be Brother Larry Newsom's intercessor. And he can be our intercessor here in Spartanburg County, and he can be the intercessor for Cherokee County. He can be intercessor by the mark for South Carolina, and he can be the intercessor for the state of California and Arizona. If there's anybody saved out there, say amen. And there is. 
He's not wasting time. Take your Bibles. Take your Bibles, everybody. I want you to go to, I want you to go to, um, I need to show you this. I want you to go to Hebrews. Go to Hebrews, everybody. Go to Hebrews chapter 6. This is what's happening. This is why he's there. This was the, uh, this, was, this is practically looking at it practically. This is why he's there. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 20. I'm going to bring it to a close in just a minute. Hebrews 6, 20. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. If he's the forerunner, that is the guarantee that others are to follow. And we're going to follow. Take your Bibles and go to Hebrews chapter 7, verse number 24. Hebrews 7, verse 24. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Why? Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. That's you, friend. You can put your name down there. I'm so glad I can talk to him any time of the day or night. I'm so glad, thank God, I don't have to get a busy signal. I'm so glad, thank God, he's always, he never slumbers nor does he sleep. And by the way, Brother Dennis, he cares about me and he cares about you. He is interceding. He is our priest. I'm not finished. Take your Bibles and go to uh, chapter 9. Go to chapter 9 of Hebrews. We're finishing Hebrews. Look at chapter number 9. Hebrews 9, and look, if you will, in verse number 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places. I'm talking about when he was received up, when the cloud received him out of their sight. What all happened? Verse 24, for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, with the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself. What for? What for? Now to appear in the presence of God for us. Right. Look at verse 26. But then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Look, if you will, at Hebrews chapter number four. Go back, go back a couple of chapters. Hebrews chapter four. I love this. Hebrews four. You, you should love this. It's a shouting ground right here. I mean it, it's shouting ground. Hebrews 4, 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Here's the wording. Here's another uh, interesting wording. That is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Here's the conclusion of all. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Thank God the throne room's always open. Thank God I tell you today as a pianist, God, he's just a prayer away. He's just a, now listen, listen, I gotta hurry and quit, but I wanna tell you, I wanna tell you, don't throw rocks at me, don't throw rocks at me, but I've needed mercy. I needed mercy. Not one time, several times. I needed mercy. I tell you, Brother Andy, I not only needed mercy, I needed grace to help me. I feel like preaching. I needed grace to help me in my time of need. And I tell you, friend, he has abundant grace. He has sustaining grace. He has encouraging grace. Hey, friend, hey, hey. He's got sufficient grace. Why did he ascend? Why did he ascend? To continue his ministry. To sit down at the Father's right hand. To be our ever abiding high priest. One more, I'm not finished. She's playing, but I'm not finished. Romans 8, go to Romans 8. Go to Romans 8. Romans 8. Man, there's so many more verses. Romans chapter 8, verse number 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God. Could I say something to you today? 
as kind as I can say it, God is sitting next to God. God blows my mind. Blows my mind. God is sitting next to God. Who also maketh intercession for us. Stay there. Stay there. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them, come to our rescue, them that are tempted. Lastly, and I'm finished, I mean it, I'm done. My little children, this is good, this is really good. What a great scripture to close on. My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Advocate, your lawyer, your go-between, your representative, your intercessor, your representative before God. And if you do sin, and if I do sin, thank God that precious blood can cleanse us all over again. I say to you today, Thank God for the garden. Thank God for Gabbatha. Thank God for Golgotha. Thank God for that burial tomb. Oh my, last Sunday. Thank God for the resurrection. But I tell you, friend, that was not the end of it. Thank God for the bodily, the bodily ascension. And thank God for his ever continuing faithful, loving, merciful ministry on our behalf. Well, David say, what would we do if we didn't have an advocate? I'll tell you something else that blows my mind. When I pray, and I offer my prayers, Jackson, to the great high priest, does the great high priest offer them to the Father? So God's offering them to God, and God answers if it's His will. Amen? Y'all got that right? I tell you what that makes me want to do, Brother Doug Pye. It makes me want to pray. It makes me want to take every burden I have, every care, Brother Perry, everything that gets my heart and yours too, you're about to cry right now, and I love it. I love you. All that grips my heart, all that grips my heart, I go to the throne. I'm welcome. I'm welcome. I'm trying, I'm trying to quit. I don't have to schedule an appointment. I don't have to sign a, sign a, sign a, a guest list. I don't have to go to a certain place. I can be any place. I don't have to wait for an appropriate hour. It can be one in the day or one in the morning. Let's have church, amen, let's have church. Time doesn't matter, place doesn't matter, distance doesn't matter. I'm glad I don't have to be down here. Sometimes I'm not down here. Miss Jenny, I can call on him. I can call on him in the woods. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, and I think you'll say, man, I will quit. And I've done this all my saved life. I can call on him driving down the road with my hands on the steering wheel. 
And I don't have to text him. And I don't have to close my eyes. I just talk to him. Lord, I need your help. Lord, brother, brother so-and-so needs you today. Lord, please help sister so-and-so. Lord, please save that sinner. Lord, please help our family. Help that family, Lord. Lord, help that marriage. Help that young lady. Help that young man. Help that preacher just took that church. Direct access. Aren't you glad you're a believer? As the brother says, as the brother said, it's good to be saved. Let's stand. What what they what they playing, brother Cam? Two oh one. Sing it. Let's sing it. Ready? Sing it. Sing it. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Sing now. Grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Sing now. Sing. Yonder on Calvary's mount I'll pour Sing now. There where the blood of the Lamb was shed Grace, grace, God's grace Grace that will pardon and cleanse said that's about half of the main points about the ascension I don't know that I'll pick it back up because I wanted to get to the last one anyway the purpose of it the practicality of it so I appreciate you listening brother Galloway would you step up here and dismiss us please sir and we'll go and thank you visitors for being here love for you to come back tonight at six and then Wednesday night at seven and immediately after the service tonight ten and up and I know you got to go home and come back and get them but you know if you'll carpool a little bit and Maybe somebody help somebody pick somebody's youngins up. And the point is, we, we're having a get together for your children and your teenagers, and we'd love for all of them to stay. Okay, all of them to stay, okay? Brother Brian, if you'll pray with us, please. Lord, thank you for the extent you've went to to see to it that we have a relationship with you. Hallelujah. Certainly not worthy of it, but I bless your name for it. Mm. I pray that you'd help us, God, to yield ourselves to you. Mm. And Lord, cast all of our cares upon you, knowing that please, you care please, for us. Please. We know the Spirit itself mm. maketh intercession mm. for us God. with groanings which cannot be uttered. And Lord, the Spirit of God takes our prayers, our groanings, and takes them but to you and to the throne of God. And the interpretation is made, and God, you make application. And God, you suit a blessing to our need. And I bless you for that relationship. Lord, I'm thankful that it's not Mickey Mouse and pie in the sky. No, Minnie no. Mouse. Lord, I'm so glad that it's real. It's yeah, as, real, yeah. as real as the skin on my hand. And I bless you for that. And Lord, I pray that you'd meet the need of every heart and every individual in the house of God today. Pray that you bring us back, Lord, tonight in a spirit of worship. Help us, God, to come back tonight in a spirit of gratitude. Mm. Lord, I know that attitude is pretty much based, uh, altitude is based on our attitude God, many times. Us. So I pray that you'd help us, mm -hmm. Lord, to come back with the proper and respectful attitude towards you tonight. Yeah. We'll be careful to bless you. In Jesus' sweet name, amen. Amen. Shake hands. Shake hands. All right. Hey, if you want to...